Hello and welcome back. Today, I want to talk a little bit about lighting and how to create the glowing effect that you see here in this rendering. I had someone reach out and ask me how to do this, so I decided to make a video about it. It's actually really easy to do and it doesn't require you to change any settings in the light properties or anything like that. It's all done in compositing after you render. So let's get into it. So here's the model that I created for this video. If you watched my chain video, then you'll probably recognize these lanterns. And this building is part of a model that I created a long time ago in another program. I just broke off this section and brought it into Blender for this project. I didn't do anything with the inside of the building or the roof because in camera view, this is all you can see. So there was no need to do all the extra work. For the plants and trees, I used the Botanic add-on from Polygonic. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to check it out. I use the Botanic Light, but they do have other options. In the back, I have a flat plane that faces the camera with a photo of a desert sky for the background. And I also added some very simple fog, which is basically just a cube, which covers the entire model. Then in the shading workspace, I created a new material. I deleted the principled BSDF and then hit shift A and added a principled volume. And I plugged that into the volume input on the material output. I left the color set to a light gray, and then I set the density to 0 0.01. And that gives me just a little bit of hazy fog. If you want to know more about fog, I have another video on that subject, and I'll leave a link to it in the description below. So that's about it for the scene setup. Now for the lighting. I have these glass panels in the lanterns, and in the shading tab, I created a new material with the roughness set to 0.6 and the transmission weight set to 1, and I set the base color to a slightly tan color. And I also added a light path node with the is camera ray plugged into the alpha on the principled BSDF. The reason for this is because if I don't use the light path, the lighting doesn't look quite right. The light still works, but it just looks kind of weird and unnatural. Here in this example, you can see the difference between having the light path enabled or disabled. It's a subtle difference, but I think having the light path enabled looks quite a bit better. And an added benefit is that it cut down the render time for these images from about five minutes for the image on the left to about 30 seconds for the image on the right. So using the light path node made a big difference in the render time. Now, if I hide the light panels, you can see the point light inside. And over here in the light properties, I have the color set to a sort of orange-ish color and the power set to 30 watts, and I have the radius set to 0.1. And that's it for the lighting, so now I just need to render. For the camera, I set the focal length to 35 millimeters. In the render properties, I'm using cycles with GPU compute, and I set the render noise threshold to 0 0.01. And for the output properties, I have the resolution set to 3840 by 2520. So now if I hit F12 to render, this is what I get. Now this looks okay, but there isn't any glow around the lights. So here's what you need to do. First, I'm going to minimize the render window and switch to the compositing tab. And I'll pull the timeline down to give myself more screen space. Then I'll click on Use Nodes, and that will bring up the compositing nodes. 
Now I want to be able to see my render in the background, so I'll hit Shift A and search for Viewer. And then I'll plug the render layers into the viewer. And now I can see my render. But if you can't see your render, make sure you have Backdrop enabled. If it's disabled, you won't be able to see your render. Now I want to zoom out so I can see the whole image, so I'll hit the V key a couple times until I can see the whole rendering. And I'll drag these down here so they're out of the way. And now I'll hit Shift A and search for Glare. And I'll drop it between the render layers and the composite node. Then I'll plug the Glare node into the Viewer node so I can see what's happening in the render. And right away you can see we've got some glare happening, but the glare node is currently set to streaks, which is not what I want. So I'm going to change this to fog glow. Now with the threshold set to 1, it's going to apply glow to all the bright objects in your scene, which might not be what you want. In this render, it doesn't really matter because the only bright objects are the two lights. But if you have a lot of reflective objects in your scene, You'll need to play with this value in order for the glow to be applied only to the brightest objects like your lights and maybe some highly reflective objects. For example, here are some images I saved out with the threshold set to different amounts. I added a couple light balls, a chrome ball, and a blue metal ball. And I added this astronaut because he has some bright lights on his suit. And you can see here in the top left image that if you have the threshold set to zero, then everything is glowing. And the render is really bright and kind of washed out. But in the top right image, if I set the threshold to two, now the overall lighting is better. And the glare is a little more refined and it's mainly just affecting the lights and the reflections. Then in the lower left image, if I set the threshold to 25, now it's basically just the lights that have the glare applied, not so much in the reflections. And in the lower right image, if I go really extreme and set the threshold up to 50, now there's no glare applied to anything except a little bit on the lights on the astronaut suit because they're actually the brightest things in the render. So the threshold is something you just have to play around with until you get the right balance. So back to this render, since the scene is dark and the two lights are the only bright spots in the scene, I'm going to set the threshold at 4, and I think that looks pretty good. But if I wanted to boost the glow effect a little more, I can select the glare node and then Shift D and create a duplicate and drag and drop it here, and that will double the glow strength. But I don't think it's necessary for this render, so I'll delete this second glare node and just use the one. Now, once you're happy with the result, you can bring your render window back up. And you can see that the glare effect is applied to the render. So all you have to do is go to Image and Save As. And I always choose TIFF format for the highest quality to take into Photoshop for any final adjustments. And then hit Save Image. Okay, that's about it for this one. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and post them below. And if you use this technique in your renders, go ahead and tag me on social media so I can see what you're working on. I always like seeing what other people are doing. And if you'd like to follow me on Instagram and Facebook, I post my final renders there, work in progress images, previews of new videos I'm working on, and anything else I think is informative or interesting. You can find links to my pages in the description below. So anyway, if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.